solutions architect here with uh, Elite Aerospace Group. Uh, we're hosting this webinar to introduce you to the CREO collaboration extension and flexible modding, modeling extension. All right. So before we go into the demo, I'd like to quickly introduce you to Elite. Uh, we're PTC partner, consulting and reselling for PTC, but we are also uh, a customer of PTC as well. Our manufacturing division ut utilizes PTC products for CAD, PLM, IoT, and AR. Uh, the team at Elite Engineering Services administrates, configures, and customizes PTC products to meet our business requirements. Uh, this allows us to take this knowledge and provide services helping customers overcome their business challenges as well. Um, the digital enterprises team services are mostly centered around PTC, PTC solutions such as Windchill, Creo, and Navigate. And we also do consulting, training, and CAD automation. And then one last thing before we get into the demo, uh, the next webinar will be on Vuforia Studio and Vuforia Chalk. Uh, you can see how Vuforia Chalk powers your team with AR remote assistance to solve problems faster and more effectively. It'll be two weeks from today and you can register using the URL on this slide. In addition, we are a few days away from a PTC digital event embracing the pace of change for aerospace and defense in a connected world. It will examine the latest challenges regarding cybersecurity, additive manufacturing, ELM, and AR IoT use cases across the government and industry. With that, I'll pass the presentation over to Andrew, who is a member of the Virtual Center of Excellence at PTC, and will be introducing us to CREO's collaboration and flexible modeling extension. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let me uh, you... pass you the ball there. Okay. All right, I'm sharing my screen. Let me know when you can see that, please. All right, you can see it. Okay, perfect. So, hello, anyone on the call. Uh, my name is Andrew Leedy. I am an application engineer here with PTC. I'm out of our Greensburg, Pennsylvania office, which is right outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania today. Uh, and here to talk about, as he said, the Unite uh, collaboration extensions as well as flexible modeling today. Now, before I get into uh, any of those extensions, I first want to talk about some of the challenges we're hearing from our customers and, and kind of set the stage for the conversation today. Um, one of those challenges that we're hearing all the time are that suppliers provide non creo data. Whether this is going to be an internal supplier or an external supplier, all the time we're trying to read data in from another CAD solution. They might not be on Creo. You might have somebody within the company who's not on Creo. You still need to be able to bring that data in and be able to work with it many times. We also see that customers demand non creo data. So not only do you need to be able to work with it in a certain format, the customers are demanded in a different format. So how do I manage moving between all these different file systems and how do I ensure that my customers can get the data in the uh, way that they need to be able to bring it into their CAD solution? And all the time we're seeing mergers, acquisitions, uh, just uh, generally happening between uh, moving between CAD solutions. You know, it's happening all the time. One division is on Creo, one division on CATIA, or Consolidate, and everybody has to move over to Creo. Uh, maybe older files might be part of another third-party CAD. You know, five years ago we were a different CAD solution, and now we might be on Creo today. How do I still make sure that I can properly read in all the data to be able to do my job properly? Um, in terms of actually bringing data in to CREA, we've seen historically there might be a difficulty in importing data into really any CAD solution. You know, depending on the format or how it was saved off, you may or may not be able to get it in cleanly. We see this all the time with the STEP or IGES files. You know, depending on where it's coming from, uh, how old the file is, really vastly changes how well you're going to be able to read the data into CREO and if you're going to have to get any kind of import failures that you're going to have to go back and clean up. Not only are we, uh, do we have problems bringing it in the first time sometimes, but what happens if we get an updated version of the file? So can you use it right away? Do you have an update to the file? Um, how do I push the update in when you know, typically I might just be getting this in a different format that is not really natively, uh, I can't really natively read the change into Career Parametric. 
and we're seeing just high IT costs associated with maintaining multiple software packages to try to combat some of these problems. You know, between the maintenance, the training, making sure we have enough seats of one solution to be able to access all the data. You know, if, I need, if I'm between Creo and NX, I might have to split my seats of data and make sure I can get access to all the different uh, CAD files that I need. We're just seeing a lot of high costs associated with that. So our solution there is Unite Technology within Career Parametric. So Unite Technology is the system running in the background in Creo to be able to bring data in and also to save it off. And it's really going to be broken into two different sections today. So this consolidate and collaborate idea, and I'll go into those separately. So the, the general functionality across both of those ideas between consolidate and collaboration, uh, I just want to be able to bring data in. So we're able to really import any common 3D CAD format into Career Parametric. So whether it's going to be SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, NX, Solid Edge, Inventor, your, your typical IGIS and STEP files, we can always import those in. That hasn't really been too much of an issue uh, in the past. Something that's uh, particularly interesting, though, is that we can also open key 3D CAD formats. So not just do an import where we're converting it into Creo geometry. In this case, we're actually natively reading it in its native format. So open a SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS CATIA, NX, or Inventor with Creo 5 file directly into Creo Parametric without having to convert it into Creo geometry. There's also functionality within Creo to be able to save as those key 3D CAD formats. So SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, NX, and Inventor with Creo 5, we can perform a save as, as function with the collaboration extensions. And the key point here is that we no longer need to have any non-PTC license or software installed on our workstation. So this is something that historically you might have to, had to have done. This is gone now. So you don't have to have SOLIDWORKS on your workstation to be able to open up a SOLIDWORKS file within Creo Parametric. As I said, we're going to talk about this in those two different um, realms. The consolidation is basically just bringing data in. Um, and this is kind of the base functionality within Creo. And the collaboration is, okay, how can we take this a step further with each CAD solution to be able to work with them a little bit better? So first on that consolidation uh, part here, so this is importing and opening key 3D CAD formats. So the process here is pretty simple. It's exactly how you expect, I'm, uh, I'm sure. If you do an import, you know, no matter what CAD solution it's coming from, as we bring it into Creo in that import, it turns it into Creo geometry. But now we have two different files that there really isn't a link maintained between any of this. If, I, if there's ever a change on this file over here, I'd have to re-import and reconvert the geometry into the Creo part. And it's not really going to recognize any of the history that we might have done there. And open is a little bit better than this import because now I can have it sit as its native format directly within my Creo model tree. This means that I don't have any kind of duplications of data line around. I don't have a Creo assembly and a SOLIDWORKS assembly of the same particular file. Now I am just managing one file between them. And if I ever do need to make a change onto this, I only really touch the things that I need in order to perform that change. So any of these other sub-assemblies that aren't affected by this uh, the sub-assembly or part level change, those will remain in their native format. So it it's offers that on-demand conversion of non-PTC non Creo components into a Creo, uh, PTC Creo component. Now, the second half of this, not just be able to bring data in, but let's take a little bit step further and be able to work with the suppliers a little bit better. So this is the capability to not only open those key 3D CAD formats, but also automatically update any new versions of that data coming in. So be able to recognize an update from SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, NX, or Inventor, and also be able to perform a save as function on those. So if I have a supplier that or a customer that's on SOLIDWORKS and need them, their files in a SOLIDWORKS format, I can still work within Creo and deliver it in that format to them. And this looks uh, fairly uh, you know, straightforward. If we do an open, you bring it directly into our Creo assembly, just as we did before. And if we ever push any kind of update into this, it, uh, Creo will now recognize this update if we have the collaboration extension for uh, those 3D CAD solutions. And we can also perform a save as, no matter what file solution or file type they were coming from, if I need to get all these files off in a SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, Inventor, or NX format, I can perform that save as function and get those off to the customer that needs them. So with this, we're hoping to eliminate reliance on third-party CAD solutions, you know, be able to consolidate onto one CAD solution, and then just be able to either work with data from your customers or, uh, or your suppliers or get your data out to your customers in the right formats. Overall, reduce that IT support that we were talking about, you know, the training costs, making sure we're not training up on multiple different CAD solutions, just move into one. 
and hopefully streamline our product development, you know, make it a little bit easier to keep track of files and cut the time on the data conversion that's going to be necessary in terms of bringing in a file, importing it, re-importing if there's ever any kind of change, modifying the geometry that I've already modified on the pre uh, mod or the, uh, the, the, the older file. Just cut down on that duplicated work that we might be working with traditionally. Uh, improve our multi-CAD collaboration, you know, really just be able to work with any CAD solution a little bit better. Eliminate the waste of time performing non-value added translation and recreation. Again, don't have to recreate anything. Just uh, push the update in, and uh, if, if you didn't make any modifications, it will still recognize that there is a change to that non-CREO data that you brought in. And overall, just increase your productivity and be able to work with the data a little bit faster. Now, before I get into the demonstration of this, I just want to do a uh, quick update. This is going to be a license update for um, you know, CREO 5. This is all the different file solutions that we support. You know, for the consolidation, uh, be able to bring in Katia, NX, SolidWorks, uh, and in that, and Inventor here as well. This file isn't, or this slide isn't updated to support that, but we can do a native open on all of these within Career 5. And then there is a collaboration extension for each of these uh, major CAD players to be able to perform the update and the save as for those. So if I want to be able to update as CATIA, I have to have the CATIA collaboration extension to perform that function. So it's four different extensions to be able to support that. Now see a little bit of this in action. So we're going to be working with a, uh, a third-party CAD file in a CREO assembly, pushing an update in um, and making sure that uh, all the changes that we made into our assembly is, is pretty seamless in terms of pushing our update from uh, another CAD solution. So here we're working with our bronze shaver today. So we are partway done with this model. The only thing that we need to add at this point is a motor. So our company is going to be the one that designs the shaver, but we don't necessarily design every single component in here, which is going to be, uh, you know, one of those would be the motor itself. So the motor is going to come from another CAD format, which is going to be an NX format. So instead of just importing this, converting into a career geometry, I don't necessarily want to have to manage this again within my, um, you know, within my, my, uh, my PLM solution, I already have this, this uh, assembly located in there. Let's just be able to bring it into our assembly and not have to create a copy of that. So we can perform that native open on, as I said, NX, SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, and Inventor files. And you'll notice as I bring that in, it's not doing that data translation. It's not taking a minute to uh, figure out how to convert it into career geometry. It's just reading it in as its native format and places us straight into the assembly mode for this. So now we have our NX motor inside the CREO assembly. We can set our default constraints to put it into the correct location or go a little bit more in depth with our constraints if necessary. Now, I want to add something onto this. I don't necessarily want to make any modifications onto the motor itself, maybe, but I have other things that are going to go around it. So I'm going to assemble in this back cover that we have, this sheet metal back cover that's going to need to, uh, to fit on here pretty snug and tight. So let's put our back cover onto this motor. And I could see uh, specifically that we're going to have a problem here as soon as we start to define this. I see that that motor has a few tabs in the back that are going to require us to make a change to our back cover. And you can see they're kind of poking through our sheet metal at the moment. We can hide everything else away that we're not going to need, and we could start working and making some changes onto this cover to accommodate that, uh, that, that motor design. So just modifying that back cover to fit that new design. And our, our design intent here is to make two cutouts in our sheet metal. Uh, model, and then we're going to be referencing our NX motor pins so that if, we're, again, there's ever any kind of CAD update to this from the supplier, that I will be able to push that update into my sheet metal uh, part here. And so that, that means that if I, you know, as I go through and order this motor, that my cover is going to be able to fit on there no problem. Now we can uh, approach this in a few different ways. One way is through the copy geometry from our advanced assembly extension. So this will allow us to actually uh, and do exactly as I said, copy the geometry from those tabs into our part model. So now I would be able to use them as references for my user-defined feature for my cutouts. And we're doing cutout features like this all the time. So we have something like this already shaved off or uh, saved off. No need to uh, duplicate the work that we've already done before. So uh, here we're just placing that cutout directly into our assembly. Um, again, something a uh, feature that we're doing all the time, you know, in our assemblies. Let's just be able to copy and reuse that and especially just be able to mirror it across so we have a little bit of more of a symmetrical look to this so that our other pin is going to be uh, referenced here as well. So no, no, uh, 
through this whole process, we didn't import the NX file, we didn't change our NX file, um, it still sits over there and you can see that DC motor in my model tree, it still is sitting there as its native format, which means if there's ever gonna be any kind of changes to this, I can pick those up with the collaboration extension and be able to push those changes into my Creo assembly without having to re-import or reopen this file again. Well, we're gonna make one more change to this before we push an update in. Uh, this makes some changes to our uh, rubber bumpers in the back. So just do this additional change real quick. I have these rubber bump bumpers that are running along the, uh, the side of this and uh, that are gonna hold this in place. So I have some curves that we started with that are gonna define the shape of these bumpers. And we're just gonna add some more references in here to this imported data uh, just to be able to make sure that, you know, if there, again, if there's ever gonna be any kind of update here that I can push those changes into another part here. So we're gonna copy the geometry of that whole outside shell here. And then we're gonna use that to help define our uh, sketch extrude. We just do kind of an up to next to that uh, copy geometry that we did. So we're gonna select on that side here. Now we make sure that if there's ever any kind of update, it's always gonna go up to that particular piece. As soon as it sees a change, it's gonna to, it's going to go up to the new location that that's gonna be placed at. So now just finish our design. Uh, you know, I can make sure that we have everything all sorted out on a model tree, then just save it off in whatever format I need to. And this workflow we're talking through here, this is something that typically happens. I brought in a third party CAD file, you know, in this case, that NX motor, made some design changes to my existing Creo piece, and then, um, and then just saved it off. And now we're all good. But now what happens when this NX motor gets updated down the road? Typically, this would inquire, uh, require, if I didn't have any other kind of update or extra extension within Creo, this would require me to reopen, reassemble, re-import, and then figure out how I'm going to make the modification onto my assembly. But we went through and uh, tried to figure out the best design intent we could in terms of getting this particular model in. So now if there's an update and we have the collaboration extension for NX, I can recognize that update and just be able to push it to my assembly and it'll update anything that was referenced off of it. So we're gonna bring in that update, the updated file here. We have some color changes. We have uh, some changes onto our motor. So specifically, it's gonna be able to pick up any kind of outdated uh, components or features that we have. So in this case, we had a few of those copy geometry features that were uh, gonna be updated here. So I can specifically find those on my model tree. So I don't have to really worry about uh, tracking those changes down. It's gonna automatically flag them for me. And on each one of these, I can go into a little bit of detail, especially with something like the advanced assembly extension. Uh, I can specifically see what was changed, what was old, what's outdated, and explore the new update and make sure that this is gonna work for my particular design and then push the changes into my assembly. Many times I don't wanna do this automatically. I wanna be able to have the choice to push the change in. So here we can see very clearly just outlined here um, and we can actually hide some of this away, but in gray is my outdated. So this is what is the older file. And then we can see specifically what was changed. So we can see the new location for these pins on the back of my motor. And as soon as I decide what I wanna do, I can push that update in. And then you'll notice this automatically pushes the update into anything that I had referenced off of it. So this ensures that I can always have the most up-to-date CAD in my assembly with the least amount of rework required um, overall. And the same would go for those rubber bumpers on the side. If I ever made any kind of changes to that outside shell, maybe that was coming from a supplier as well, this will allow me to push the update into that piece as well. And, you know, isolate the change, show the outdated, updated features, and then push that change in. So that is the uh, Creo Unite with the collaboration extensions, uh, making sure that we make the most use in that multi-CAD design environment that we all want to get to. Now that's if we just want to bring a file in, maybe manage the change in another CAD solution, but what if we want to manage that change within Creo? What if I want to make a change onto a part that comes from a supplier? That's where it starts to get a little bit tricky because many times when you bring in those imports, they don't have any kind of feature history tree to deal with. And that could be a huge problem in terms of actually going through and modifying this. It means a lot of reworking features, a lot of trying to figure out how the designer uh, who, who first built it went through and, and changed and made modifications onto it just so I can make a change. But that's where our tool flexible modeling really comes in handy. It's gonna allow us to work with that third party CAD solution a little bit easier if we need to make modifications onto it. So it's all about um, tr just enabling us to edit data from any CAD solution, no matter where it comes from. So let me change my screen around. We'll do a few slides introduction into that. 
and then we'll get into a demonstration of that as well. So just as I start off with Query Night, I just want to touch on some of the challenges we're hearing from customers when it comes to using a tool like Flexible Modeling. Again, this is all about working with non-native CAD files. You know, it's always okay to be able to go through and modify CAD data from within your particular solution, but what if you need to make a change to something that's coming from SOLIDWORKS or it's a step file or it's coming from NX? Um, changing the files when there are no features, there's no feature history to be able to go through and modify. This is also something that's particularly useful for maybe just doing last minute changes to very complex designs. Uh, I don't really want to have to go through and modify something on my assembly just to find out that it breaks 50 features that I just did not anticipate this modifying. And then I have to go through on each feature and then try to update them all until I've fixed my assembly. So that could be a big challenge for especially parts like as big as this. Think about how many references there might have been. And, and you could try really hard to just make sure you don't create external references, but sometimes you just can't get away from it. And then sometimes we're having to deal with these old legacy models, uh, you know, something that may, might have come from a CAD solution a few years ago. Just looking directly at this, it's not entirely intuitive what, which of these dimensions I need to go through and change to modify something like these little cutouts on the side here. Um, you know, there's just so many dimensions and on this screen here, how do I make sure that I'm modifying the right ones without affecting anything else? Uh, we're also seeing CAD use more and more to link up to uh, structural analysis tools, but many times they're going to want simplified models. So how do I normally approach this in terms of making sure that I have the trimmed down model in terms of getting out to my simulation? You know, many times the simulation guys don't particularly know how to do CAD, but they need to get this end result simulated, uh, you know, file for their simulations. So they, do they need to go to an engineer to be able to make the changes onto this? Or is there something that's a little more simpler that they would be able to use as a tool to clean this model up a little bit? And then we're just seeing problems with just, I want to try different designs very quickly. I want to try to innovate a little bit better. Let's make the design bigger, smaller. I just want to try very simple things, maybe onto a model that's a little bit more stubborn. Again, like something like an import part. You know, how would I make sure that I uh, kind of make this a little bit thinner and make it taller very easily? So that's where we're coming from in terms of the flexible modeling extension. So this is just being able to edit data very fast, very flexible from any CAD solution. And again, the intent here is not to replace parametric modeling, but it's just kind of adding another tool to our toolbox when it comes to our design, giving us something that um, is very intuitive to use and, and very quick to make some of those changes. So the general capabilities here, again, make changes to any CAD model quickly with or without feature history. So it works on any import feature. Um, and, and just going back to this, this is typically what we get whenever we bring data into Query. You get this import feature ID. Uh, I like to call this this blob of geometry. If you'd select on this, it's just this big green blob. It, it doesn't recognize what's a hole. It doesn't recognize what's a cut. It doesn't recognize where the rounds are. It's just a big blob of geometry that I, that I have been tasked with going through and making a modification to. But with something like flexible modeling, it's built to be pretty easy to use. Uh, it, you work by just selecting on geometry and then doing something like this, just move it. You know, just take this boss, take that cut that goes into it, and then just move it down and, and extend uh, this entire uh, piece of metal off. And we recognize features, you know, bosses, cuts, rounds, chamfers. It doesn't matter how the, the geometry might have even been created, but it's treated as the selection. And then we do, we can do a few different things. We can translate, move, you know, if I need to make this, uh, all the geometry on the center here, this whole cutout, I just need to modify the angle that this is placed at or change the dimension a little bit. I can just grab on it and then just translate it, you know, pretty easily using either draggers or by referencing uh, another part on my assembly. Something very simple as well, something like remove. I just want to remove this entire cut. I don't want to have to go through and try to remodel and build an extrude that goes all the way through this and then has to match the contour over here. Let's just take that geometry on the inside there, remove it all, replace it with uh, you know, flat geometry or you know, solid geometry so that there's no longer a hole. And it can even go forward and do things like recognizing patterns. patterns. So it doesn't matter how this might have been created, this might not have been created as a pattern, I can treat it as such. So if I ever make any modifications onto this, you know, onto this particular part, it would push that modification to the rest of the pattern. If I, uh, I could modify how many of these selected parts there are in the pattern. So if there's, you know, 12 or 14 of these holes along the side here, I can cut that down to six or seven. And we can go through and do things like recognize my chamfers and rounds. Um, and again, just making some changes onto uh, those kind of stubborn import parts that might have been a little bit more difficult to change uh, historically. 
Uh, we also maintain our full Creo history. So the, uh, these parts come in in the, uh, in the way of flex features. So they're what are added to our model tree. So these are going to be things like our redefine, reorder, delete, my flexible patterns. They all just sit alongside our model tree. So even if we're working with something uh, like just a regular Creo file that has uh, already features built into us, I can still use a tool like flexible modeling. It's all about just getting me to my end result a little bit quicker. So whether this is using flexible modeling or using my standard modeling tools, um, again, it's just another tool in the tool belt to be able to go forward and tackle some particular problems. Uh, this also, and this is new within Creo 4, it's the ability to work with this within our simulate extension as well. So uh, there's flexible modeling tools built within Creo Simulate. So this is even built into our uh, standalone simulate tools. So not, that's kind of the one that's separate from Creo Parametric. So if an analyst needs to go forward or I just need to make a change, you know, as I'm running a simulation, you know, I, just, I don't have to jump back out of the extension, make the change, and then jump back in. Let's just do it right there. And there's things like remove to simplify the model, as well as some basic flex setting with a flexible modeling license. So uh, standard out of the box without the flexible modeling, you can always do the remove within simulate. But if I want to make any changes onto it, like I was doing within Career Parametric, like I want to move something, I want to modify a whole size with the modify analytic, that would require me to have a flexible uh, modeling license on my career workstation. And there was also added the ability to work with flexible modeling for sheet metal parts as well. And this is uh, a little more specialized than the rest of our flexible modeling tools, uh, but this is you know specialized to be able to work with bend reliefs and quarter reliefs and um, you know edit bend angles and be uh, still be able to retain and follow all the rules of sheet metal. You know as I move or remove a part of this, it's going to recognize that I need to have constant wall thickness and stuff like that. There's also design recognition with this within this. So if I have an import sheet metal piece, I can e I can even pull in things and be able to recognize it, like how many bends there are on this, how many corner release there are, and then I can go forward and modify those once I've recognized them. They just kind of sit in our model tree as these um, uh, design objects. You know, I can even go forward and say, let's edit the bend release, edit the corner release. And they'll, uh, there's little sketches here that tell you exactly what you're changing as you go forward this. You know, if I have an up round bend relief, well, let's change that to like a rip or something like that. So now we're going to go into a quick demonstration of this. Again, it's pretty easy. We just have a new flexible modeling tab within our, uh, our whole design plane there, and then I can go forward and do, start making those flex edits onto our, onto our model. Okay, so for this demonstration, we're going to work with two pieces of non-native Creo data. So first is just going to be this linkage that we might, we might have gotten from a supplier. And I want to make some changes onto this. So we can search within our current directory uh, all kinds of different files that we can bring into Creo. Uh, one of those that we're going to be working with today is going to be a SOLIDWORKS part, uh, part file. And we can see uh, native open is going to be an option here rather than just import and bring in this Creo geometry. Um, and then if you remember from those slides that I did for Unite, uh, it's going to sit as a SOLIDWORKS piece over there until I make a modification onto that. Then it will update and make it into a Creo part so, so that I can go through and um, you know, save it in that format now instead. Now what we're talking about in terms of that blob of geometry, if you notice that when we highlight that SOLIDWORKS ID 1, that's how it reads in from our import, it just gives us this whole bit as one particular piece. So it just highlights it all in green, and it's not really smart enough to recognize what all the different features were that came together to build this part. It's just one geometry here. But with something like flexible modeling, it doesn't really matter. I can go through and edit this in a pretty easy manner. So we go to our flexible modeling tab, uh, and then I just select on what type of action I want to do onto this. So if we want to do like a transform, I want to move and make this piece a little bit longer. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's just as easy as selecting on a particular surface. And it's going to notify me that I'm about to make a design change to this model. The change isn't going to be reflected in the native model. It's going to have to save this and convert it into a Creo model to be able to, uh, to, be able to push that change forward. So we could say yes to this. And then all I have to do is just shift this down, maybe lock it onto a certain axis, give it a firm dimension if necessary. Maybe I want to pull, uh, kind of rotate it around another axis. Um, we're not too restricted in what we can do there. It's telling us specifically what axis we can work on depending on the references we've selected. So now we've just made a very easy change to this, made this a little bit longer. You know, something like that, there's these uh, cutouts over here. I can recognize it as such. So this is a cut, you know, it's a negative extrude. I can go forward, recognize it, grab the geometry, and then this is say, I want to move it somewhere else. And it's going to recognize what to do uh, with the geometry that it's going past. And I can even have options to, well, let's keep the old one and then just move a new one down a certain uh, measurement. 
So uh, there's a few different options in terms of all these different tool, uh, the different features up there that you can go forward with and, and uh, modify a little bit easier. You know, something like the diameter here, a modify analytic will do the job there. I can just either use the dragger or give it a new dimension and then be able to modify that and change this. So it's pretty quick. You'll notice um, uh, that we're going through and modifying the, this import part, uh, just making a few changes that are pretty easy to do. Something down here at the bottom left, you know, this is a little more of a complicated feature. It's got some rounds that we're going to have to deal with. It, it's this big boss. It's got this cut that goes in the inside. Uh, but again, it's the same technique for something that's a little more complicated like this. I recognize it as a certain piece of geometry. So this whole thing is a cut. The inside geometry, or the whole thing is a boss. The inside geometry is a cut. It's going to grab some of the rounds that correspond to that. Um, and then moving that is just going to be easy, as easy as we did to that just flat geometry up at the top. I just say, let's just take that geometry, keep everything else the same. You know, it's still going to have the same connections in terms of how it's going to interact with the, the rest of the metal there. But let's just shift it down and make this whole thing a little bit longer. And you'll notice in the model tray over there on the left, these are where all the changes that we made are going to be stored. Uh, so if we ever need to go back and modify these or delete them off or just change the dimensions associated with it, uh, we just go over there and select it and say edit the definition of that or edit the dimensions to be able to go forward and make a change. Uh, maybe something like that, modify analytic. I don't really want this to be a different hole size for this one. I can go forward and just delete that out of there. And it's not going to delete the hole. It's going to delete the change that we made on the hole. So this is how I can go forward and make some pretty simple, uh, pretty intuitive changes onto uh, a simple model like this or even a more complex model that we might be working with. Now, the second piece we're going to be working with is going to be a CATIA model. Uh, it's going to be a little more of a complicated part than we dealt with before, uh, but the process, again, is going to be very similar to what we just did. So I can natively open that CATIA part. No data translation required in terms of bringing that in. It's just going to take some time to load, just as it would take time to load any CREA model. And then as soon as it's in, it's going to sit over there in my model tree as a CATIA part. You'll see that CATIA feature uh, ID 1, just as we did with the SOLIDWORKS part, uh, was, it's going to be a little more stubborn to work with. I don't have any kind of feature history tree, but again, with flexible modeling, we don't necessarily need that to make some changes onto this. So something like on the inside here, we just have these cuts that we want to be able to reference. Uh, we could do a few different things with this, maybe move them around, maybe just remove them all together. Uh, so in this case, a remove will just take that out, you know, it recognizes it as a cut, so it knows what to do with a cut whenever we remove a cut. It just replaces it with solid geometry. Uh, something like the, uh, you know, and then it sits over there in our model tree. We can even select it and see exactly, um, you know, where those cuts used to be. Uh, a more complicated cut here on the side, uh, we can recognize it as cuts, you know, just make, making sure that we grab on all these different walls up here. If it doesn't grab on everything automatically, we can always just auto-select them as well. Uh, those are probably built as a pattern, so we can use some of the recognition tools that are built into flexible modeling as well to be able to recognize this as a pattern. And then some of those additional options that we can change for some of these, that's allow myself to edit this. All those little black dots that are going around my feature right here are parts of that pattern. Well, there are parts that I can turn on or off. You can do something like just change the instances, change the spacing to get them evenly spacing, uh, spacing around this. Or I could even just select on those black dots to just get rid of those. Maybe I don't need one of them in that particular part. So we can go through and actually recognize uh, uh, that the uh, change the pattern that was associated with this. So we're making some uh, more complicated changes onto this part. And you can see the changes as we kind of update the model here. Where those cuts used to be, it's going to take them off. Um, something like the outside here, I just want to change the overall diameter of this disk. Uh, a change like that is pretty easily done with that modify analytic. It just adds on a little more material on the outside to reflect that new change, but it's keeping everything else the same for me. So that's how I would go forward and use flexible modeling to work with those parts that are a little more stubborn than the other ones uh, that I just need to make some quick, easy modifications onto. Again, not really replacing our parametric modeling, uh, but just giving us another tool to be able to work with some of these models. And just to kind of recap what we talked about there. So we saw a few different things today, bringing in data using Creo Unite and then modifying it with flexible modeling. Uh, we want this just to be kind of a, um, an integral part of Creo. So this isn't going to be any kind of new software to learn or maintain. It's built to be just very intuitive and very easy to pick up. You're just making these intuitive changes. If I want to move something, it's the move tool. If I want to recognize a cut and modify it, you do a cut and then you modify it. It's all about just making those quick, easy changes onto the model. And not just career models, but really any CAD data, productive use of any CAD data, regardless of where it comes from. So it doesn't matter if it's a CATIA file, SOLIDWORKS file, if it's a STEP file, 
uh, let's just make some changes onto it using the different tools built in, using the recognition tools to be able to kind of group modify things as well. Overall, uh, some of the more uh, uh, specialized cases here, streamline the process for analysis simplification. So quickly remove holes or rounds or chamfers or whatever else I can do to simplify a part for the purpose of analysis. And overall, just be able to give me better what if concepts, you know, make some changes, you know, if I can do and make a modification faster within Creo, this allows me to iterate a few more times, try a few more of those what if scenarios, you know, make a quick modification, see what it's going to look like with the changes, and I could always delete, delete it if I need to from my model tree without really having any kind of design implications on the rest of my part. So that is the flexible model extension, as well as the Unite collaboration extensions within Creo Parametric. Thank you very much, Andrew. Good stuff. <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to type it using the chat window, and uh, we'll be sure to answer them the best we can. Uh, this webinar was recorded and will be available on uh, the Elite website. All right. Looks like there are no questions. Uh, thanks again, Andrew. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Have a good day. You too. Bye.